Hello, today we're going to use moles to balance chemical equations and also we're going to learn a little hack that's going to help us in lots of different uh, calculations in chemistry. Just by way of a recap for this higher tier video, remember a mole is an amount and that amount that we need to know about is exactly 0, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's the accuracy within which we need to know it. And then we can also calculate moles by using an equation. We could calculate number of moles by using an equation and that equation we've looked at before but we can just have a little reminder for what the equation is and here it goes it looks a little, a little bit like this moles to work out the number of moles we do mass divided by relative atomic mass so the AR stands for relative atomic mass but we might need to use a very similar but slightly different equation and this one is moles is mass divided by relative formula mass now, which one is it that we use? Well, the answer is it depends on what kind of substance you're looking at. So if we're looking at atoms, if we're looking at atoms, we would use the relative atomic mass. So for example, if you've got an atom of carbon, the relative atomic mass for carbon is found easily on the periodic table. It's that top number there. So the relative atomic mass for carbon is 12. We could also look at the relative atomic mass for an oxygen atom an oxygen atom and again if you look on the periodic table you'll see 16 and 8 and the top number 16 is the relative atomic mass so that's how we find relative atomic masses and that's how we that's when we use that equation for moles if we're looking at an oxygen molecule though an oxygen molecule that's O2 it has a formula O2 so therefore we would need to work out the relative formula mass for the oxygen molecule and that's just done by multiplying the atomic mass by 2 because we have two oxygens so it's two 16s and therefore we have an answer of 32. If we wanted to look at carbon dioxide this is a formula carbon dioxide CO2 and so we would use relative formula mass. So carbon has an atomic mass of 12 oxygen that of 16 so two oxygens and one carbon so the way we'd work that out is 12 plus 2 times 16. And that would give us an answer of 44. So relative formula mass for oxygen is 32. That for carbon dioxide is 44. And that's why we have two different equations for working out moles. Because sometimes we have atoms, sometimes we have formulas. So we're going to use moles to balance equations. So here is an example of a question. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's very easy to balance an equation. You've done lots of practice on it. So for this equation here, it's just a simple case of working it out. And we'd have two aluminium oxides, four aluminiums, and three oxygens. Yes, this would be correct. But the question is asking us to do the, cal do the equation balancing by calculating number of moles. So how do we do that? Well, firstly, we need the masses of the different substances that we have. So the masses of all the substances. The second thing we need is the atomic masses of the elements present, or we could say the atoms in the equation. And the last thing we need is the equation, the mole equation, which we, which we just talked about. But here is where we can use a little hack if you find it helpful. So the hack is just a way to remember the equation. And what I always say to myself is that moles is grams over rams. Now the equation that we've learned is moles is mass over relative atomic mass, which is in grams, mass is in grams, and relative atomic mass or relative formula mass goes along the bottom. But if we remember grams over rams, it's a good way to trigger our memory to remember that formula. So firstly, the masses of the substances. We've got 204 grams of aluminium oxide, 808 grams of aluminium, but we don't know the mass of oxygen from the question. This is where we remember something we've learned in the past, the conservation of mass. In a chemical equation, the mass of the reactants always equals the mass of the product. So in this case, we can say that we have 108 minus 204, and that will give us the mass of the oxygen. So if we do that equation, or that little sum, we get 96. So that's our masses. Now we need our relative atomic or relative formula masses. So we use our atomic masses from the periodic table. Those will be given to you in the question or you'll have a periodic table to use. But the relative formula mass for aluminium oxide would be 2 times 27 plus 3 times 16. 
Now, if you wanted to do it in a slightly longer way, nothing wrong with that. You could do 27 plus 27 plus 16 three times, and that would give you the same answer. That might make it a little bit simpler, but uh, we're going to use this method here, and that gives us a relative formula mass of 102. So now we could do our grams over rams, 204 divided by 102, and that gives us an answer of 2. So this is the number of moles of aluminium oxide for this equation. Now, we can then carry on working out grams over rams for aluminium. So the atomic mass for aluminium is 27, and then we do grams over rams, 108 divided by 27, and that gives us an answer of 4. And then for the last one, for oxygen, the relative formula mass for oxygen is 32, two sixteens. That gives us 32, so we have 96 over 32. And if you work that out, that gives us an answer of three. That should say equal three there. But there are the number of moles of each of those substances. So therefore, we could just put that into the equation. So we've got two, four, and three. So that's now our balanced equation using the calculating the moles method which is what we got before, but this time we did it work, uh, calculating moles. Right, so here's another question to have a go at. Slightly different challenges in this question, but we'll write down moles equals grams over rams. If you, if you like that little hack, if you want to use it. Um, we've got 12.75 grams of sodium nitrate in this equation. We've got 10.35 grams of sodium nitrite. 10.35 grams of sodium nitrite and the question also gives us the grams or the mass of oxygen so we don't have to do any calculating of masses in this equation on this question so then we do our mole equation so it's grams over rams or grams over relative formula mass if you prefer that way but either way it's 12.75 and if you work out the relative formula mass for sodium nitrate it's 85 one sodium, one nitrogen, three oxygens. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.15. If we do the same for sodium nitrite, it's 10.35 grams divided by the relative formula mass, which is 69. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.15 again. And then for oxygen, it's 2.4 grams divided by 32. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.075. 0 0.075. So we've worked out the number of moles of each of our substances. The only problem we have, though, is that these are not whole numbers. If we are going to balance an equation, we need whole numbers because those whole numbers represent the ratios of the substances that we have. So we have to convert those into whole number ratios. And the way we do that, very simply, is to divide each and every one of those numbers by the smallest of the numbers. Divide them all by the smallest. So in this case, the smallest number we have is 0 0.075 at the end there. So we divide for the first one 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.075 and that gives us an answer of 2. The next one is the same sum we're doing so that gives us an answer of 2 and 0 0.075 divided by itself will give us an answer of 1. So now we have our whole number ratios, the number of moles in whole numbers. So we could just put those into our equation. So we have 2, 2, and 1. We don't need to put in the 1 for the oxygen, but just so we know where that 1 comes from, just so we know what's going on, I just put it in for this example. Okay, so that's the second example. Here we had whole numbers, here we didn't have whole numbers, so we had to convert to whole numbers for the second example. Now, have a go at this one for yourself. We're going to use all the information we learned on the previous two slides to have a go at this one and see what you come up with. So pause here and give it a go. Okay, so here's the answer and all the working out. If you've got all that correct, feel free to stop the video now. Uh, but if not, we're going to go through the answer and how we worked all those different parts out now. So first, we used our little hack if we like it. Moles is grams over rams. Remember that means grams over relative atomic mass or ram, uh, grams over relative formula mass. We can write out our, our equation. It wasn't given to us in the question, but it's a very simple case of just working it out from the question. Our mass of copper is 6.35. Our mass of oxygen is 1.6. These are both given in the question. The mass of copper oxide was not given in the question. But remember, we said that the conservation of mass can help us work this out. The products must 
have the same mass as the reactant. So we add 6.35 to 1.6 and we get 7.95 grams. So we have our masses and now we just do our grams over rams. So it's 6.35 divided by 63.5 for the copper. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.1. We can do mass over formula mass for the oxygen that's 1.6 over 32 which gives us 0 0.05 and then 7.95 grams over 79.5 for the copper oxide is 0 0.1 so there's our number of moles of each of those substances but remember we said we need a whole number ratio so those need to be uh, converted to whole numbers and the way we do that is we divide each one of them by the smallest one so divide each by the smallest. In this case, the smallest is 0 0.05. So we divide them all through by 0 0.05. So 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.05 gives us an answer of 2. The next one we're dividing by itself. So that's just a simple case of 1. And then the last one, we've done that one already. 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.05, that gives us 2. So our whole number rate ratio of moles is 2 to 1 to 2. We can put that into our equation. So it's 2, we don't need to put in the 1 for the oxygen and 2 for the copper oxide. Okay, so you could have got to that balancing much more simply as we've done previously, but the question, remember, is asking us to balance by calculating the number of moles of reactants and products. So that's how we do it. This question could be anything from two to four marks, depending on how much information they give you. But that's how we calculate, uh, or that's how we balance equations using moles. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you very soon.